So first off, mental math wise, say we have 3 over 8 equals 9 over n. Well, how would I get from 3 to 9? Well, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So I can do the same to my bottom. 3 times 8 is 24, so that means that n will equal 24. So if I wanted to rewrite this in the proper form, 3 over 8 equals 9 over 24. Little interesting side note, whenever you're dealing with proportions, one of the proportions will always be in something other than lowest terms. In fact, sometimes both of them will not be in lowest terms. So if we wanted to do this the long way, go through the full cross multiplication, here's how you would do it. Now, some people find this really frustrating, but it is also very important because it takes you through the entire process of manipulating equations step by step. One of the most important things to remember when you're manipulating an equation is you want to do the same thing to both sides so that it's still equal. So in the case of multiplication or division, if I'm multiplying one side, I also have to multiply the other side so that the equation stays equal. So here, our first step is to cross multiply. Right? I'm going to multiply diagonally this way and diagonally this way, so I'm doing the same thing. So I get 3n is equal to 8 times 9. So I get 3n is equal to 72. So now I want to do the same. I want to get rid of the 3, so I'm going to divide that by 3, but I want to do the same thing to both sides. So these 3's cancel out n is equal to 72 divided by 3. Well, I can use my calculator for that again. 72 divided by 3 equals 24. So n equals 24. So that's a prime example of how to do a full cross multiplication. Now I can just write up another quick one here. If I had, say, x over 100 is equal to 40 over 50. Again, I'm going to cross multiply. So I have 50x is equal to 4,000. I want to get rid of my 50, so I do the same thing on both sides. I'm going to divide by 50. These 50s cancel out. I'm left with x is equal to 4,000 divided by 50, which if I use my calculator, 4,000 divided by 50 equals 80. So my answer is going to be x equals 80. So you'll notice three steps, cross multiply, then you find divide by the number in front of the x on both sides to solve for the variable. Now that again it could be the number in front of the n, it could be the um, number in front of the p, it's the number in front of the variable. Now some people find that really tedious to do and there is a shorter way of looking at it the trick is to memorize, again, memorize the pattern. In this case, what you're going to do is you're going to find your variable, and then you're going to find the numbers that are the number diagonal from your variable, and the number above and to the side of your variable. And what you're going to do is you're going to multiply together the number beside and above, and then you're going to find that answer, and you're going to divide it by the other number. So here we would have 8 times 9 divided by 3. 
it's basically the same process as before but shortened. So we end up with 72 divided by 3 is equal to 24. So n equals 24. The other way we could write this out, 8 times 9 divided by 3. Now again, remember, this line means the same thing as divided. So we end up with 72 divided by 3. We put it through our calculator is equal to 24 once again. So that's the end of our brief review of cross multiplication, ratios, rates, and proportions. Uh, in our next unit, we're going to be looking at different applications that we use proportions for. And what I'd like you guys to do, to do now is give the worksheet that I supplied a try, and then you can review the second tutorial and try some more applied questions.